All right, everybody, this is Ross. I wanted to talk to you guys today about Aspiade fruit trees. These are two plums that I actually planted a few years ago. We've been training them in the style of an Aspiade. This is one of the many different styles that you can train an Aspiade into. And essentially just an Aspiade is kind of growing something against a fence, a wall, a structure. It's nice and compact. It has good sunlight. It gets good airflow. And therefore in the fruit tree sense, or in these plums case, in the case of these plums, they're actually gonna have really good fruit quality as well. Because of that airflow, because of that, that sunlight that these trees get, um, it really is also beautiful. So for me, in my opinion, it serves many functions. And I also think that in the fruit trees case, in a backyard setting, this is really one of the best ways to grow a fruit tree. Uh, have it up against the fence, really doesn't take up a whole lot of space and still produces a good amount of high quality fruit. Um, so in today's video, I really wanted to talk to you guys today about this particular form. This is the more traditional sense of growing an Aspiae. And we're also gonna look at my peach trees, which uh, really when I started out in growing these fruit trees, you know, eight or so years ago, really didn't know exactly what I was doing with the Aspiae form. But, and I also learned that we're really not supposed to aspire peaches, but I went ahead and tried it anyway and really found some creative ways to, uh, you know, enable myself to actually have an aspire peach tree. So I think that's what the beauty is of this, this whole video and this whole, um, you know, thinking about growing an aspire. If you're one of those people, is that there's a lot of creativity with this. I don't know if there really is any right or wrong or if there has to be some specific way of doing something, you know, really what you're trying to use is your creativity to make something work like this and grow it up against the fence and still get that amazing piece of fruit at the end of the day. Uh, so this is the more traditional sense and very quickly how this is done is we grow these trees out as a single stem whip. Actually, when I received these trees in the mail, bare rooted, we had some nice lower branching. I kept that lower branching on both of these trees and that became the lower arms of these cordons. Um, the other thing that happened is that we grew the trees out to a specific height. Here it's about five feet. I clipped the trees at five feet and that induces branching the following season or even that particular season. Once we get the branching that we want, we get that branching to the right height. We then can tie the branches down to the wire um, and that all happened basically last year. I talked a lot about setting the form up on these trees in individual videos in prior years. Now that we have the form that we want, the arms are tied down, the trees are now sending up branching from the arms themselves. And this new branching is where the fruits can form um, the following year. Or actually in this particular tree's case, we actually have some flowers and fruits that formed last year and then flowered this season and now have set fruits on these particular plums. So we're already in business, we're already getting going here. The one thing I think we have to maintain to kind of keep this form in check and really make sure that this is a more traditional sense of an Aspire is that we have to come in here on the, on the arms, especially on this top layer here where it's very vigorous. See all these new shoots that are coming up? We have to come in here in the summer and prune these this growth and really we can just come across the top really not caring or thinking much about what we're doing but just keeping this new growth in check keeping this nice and low all this new growth up here and doing that multiple times actually throughout the summer this will do a couple of things first off it's going to keep the form and uh, nice and neat and it's going to keep that new growth in check we don't want to get this too crazy or too vigorous but we also are gonna maintain that airflow and that sunlight that these trees need to make sure that the fruits on these trees are adequately getting that fruit quality that we want. It, it is really with that airflow and that sunlight that the highest fruit quality can be achieved. So that's number one. We're also gonna you know, contain that form, keep it nice and neat to what we want, but also we're gonna help set fruits for next year because doing the summer pruning, as I mentioned, and coming in here across the top, that's what's gonna set the fruits on these branches for next season. If we came in here instead and let these trees grow and grow and grow all summer and came in here in the wintertime and did our pruning, well, then we're gonna only really encourage the trees to actually 
grow and not flower. So this is doing many different functions and that's kind of really the only thing after that particular point here. We've set up the form, we got the fruits that we wanted for this particular season. And then of course now we just have to maintain that form. The other trees here that we have that are espiate are these peaches and these have been here really since I started. And they are you know just as beautiful in my mind but very very different because you can see this this stuff down here we have some lower arms that we've trained some actually have not gotten the light that they needed and because of that the tree has rejected those arms and the, and the tree has died back in those locations but this lower stuff here always fruits quite heavily it doesn't take up a whole lot of space and this growth which is quite horizontal or even slightly growing towards the ground, tends to put out a lot more fruits uh, in an easier fashion. And in the peaches case, I think this is somewhat manageable. At least for me, I would definitely consider a way of managing a tree just like this without any of this upper stuff that we're gonna mention in a minute. Uh, but if you think about what's really going on up top to really get myself hundreds of fruits, I mean, Really, between these two peach trees, I imagine this year in their seventh or eighth season, whatever it is, they're gonna probably give me over a thousand peaches between the two of them. That's quite a bit, but you can kind of see already what's going on is that this section up here, this upper tier, this upper cordon is actually forming an open center, which is, it finally got over the top of the, the fence. We formed the open center that is traditionally grown with these fruit trees right these stone fruits are in a traditional sense not in these spia they're actually more traditionally grown as an open center and that's kind of what we've done but in a very oddly different way the unfortunate part is now the fruits are quite high i can't reach them i need a ladder for most of the fruits up here at the top but even if i wanted to really cut out this upper tier i could leave some of the stuff that's lower in height I could leave some of the stuff that is bending downwards and still maintain this lower section here and I would still be very happy and still get plenty of fruits. The amount of space these trees take up is really quite minimal, especially for the amount of fruits that they give. Uh, but the, the problem is this is just, again, not in the traditional sense of what we just looked at. I mean, look at the difference between those trees and these little plums that we have over here, which are extremely different in their form. So those could turn into what we just looked at. Those could turn into those peaches, but we have to maintain the top growth here. We have to maintain all of this down here and keep that form going in that traditional sense. Um, and that's what really just comes down to, I think, preference, or really what is it that you want out of these trees. Do you want to have an espalier like this? Maybe you even want a totally different form, you know? Maybe you guys are just satisfied with a fan or maybe a, a Belgian fence or maybe some other espalier. Um, I don't know if there really is any rules and I would be really, I think, discouraged to hear if someone said, well, you really shouldn't do something like this or it can't be done like this is really what I mean to say. Certainly there are better ways to do things than others. And that's really what I was told when I started out that, you know what, this really shouldn't be done like that, Ross. You should not espie these peaches, but here we are, we got creative. Uh, the, the trees, in my opinion, serve a great function, beauty, uh, putting out great fruit quality. And now we have, you know, quite a success in my opinion. So. There it is, guys. I hope you enjoyed this little video on Aspiate Fruit Trees. We'll see everybody soon. Thanks for watching. And if you're ever, you know, trying to wonder if you should do an Aspiate Fruit Tree, absolutely do it and try something different. Uh, even just make up your own tree, make up your own form. Maybe look at some examples of what you can find on the internet. And I think you guys will be really pleased um, at the end result. Thank you, guys. We'll see you soon. Take care.